Archaeological resources at Grand Canyon. The oldest human artifacts found are nearly 12,000 years old and date to the Paleo-Indian period. There has been continuous use and occupation of the park since that time. The park has recorded over 4,300 archaeological resources with an intensive survey of over 5% of the park area. The park's 11 traditionally associated tribes and historic ethnic groups view management of archaeological resources as preservation of their heritage. Archaeological remains from the following culture groups are found in Grand Canyon National Park. Paleo-Indian, Archic, Basket Maker, Ancestral Publon, Kayenta and Virgin Branches, Kohanina, Serbat, Pai, Southern Paiute, Zuni, Hopi, Navajo, and Euro-American. Prehistory of Grand Canyon, the earliest known period of occupation, the Paleo-Indian period, began at approximately 11,500 before present BP and lasted approximately 3,000 years to the end of the last ice age. During this occupation, small, mobile bands of people hunted megafauna such as mountain goats, ground sloth, and bison, and gathered wild plants. Paleo-Indian sites are extremely rare in the Southwest. One known site has been found within the Grand Canyon. Around 9,000 years, BP environmental changes led to the expansion of differing environmental zones across the Southwest. During this environmental expansion, Paleo-Indians adapted to new environments and developed new subsistence strategies. The descendants of the Paleo-Indians, known as the Arctic, hunted smaller game and moved seasonally across the landscape to procure seasonal resources across vast territories. Tool kits included adlatls for dart throwing and chipped stone tools and ground stone tools, such as metates and manos for plant processing. Arctic sites generally consist of temporary camps, rock art panels, caves, rock shelters, hearths or fire pits, grinding and processing tools, projectile points, flake debitage, animal and plant remains. Arctic sites have been identified throughout Grand Canyon, Fairly et al. 1994. Experimentation with horticultural subsistence began in the southwest around 3500 BP with the appearance of maize agriculture. Horticultural subsistence strategies still relied heavily on hunting and gathering local resources, though maize, beans, and squash were planted in locations where seasonal flooding allowed for the germination and growth of cultivated plants. With the adoption of a more sedentary lifestyle, Storage cysts and granaries were used to store surplus supplies and pottery appeared by AD 500. The gradual shift to village life is referred to as the formative period, lasting from AD 500 to 1540. Neil et al. 1999. During the formative period, the semi-sedentary occupants of Grand Canyon began producing baskets, sandals, and storage features such as slab blind cysts and granaries. This tradition first appears in the Southwest around A to one. The period, often viewed as a transition to agriculture, marks the beginning of horticultural subsistence strategies. Initially, dwellings appeared as shelters in overhangs and caves. By AD 500, circular pit houses appear in small aggregates, suggesting the beginning of village life. Pottery appears at this time often gray wares with black painted designs. In Eastern Grand Canyon, these occupations have been associated with Kohanina peoples, Schwartz, 1969. The appearance of ceramic vessels, both jars and bowls, seems to be associated with an increase in sedentary lifeways and the development of habitation structures. These structures began with semi-subterranean pit houses and shifted to above ground masonry room blocks or pueblos. The bow and arrow replaced the atlatl, and the geographic region of resource procurement expanded. A more stable subsistence strategy of combined agriculture and hunting and gathering allowed for the continued aggregation of individuals into small villages or hamlets. Ceramic technology and design styles became more elaborate and new technologies developed, including the use of cotton for textiles. Surface storage rooms developed into above-ground habitation structures and later contiguous pubos in some locales. 
By AD 900 along the river corridor, Puebloan peoples were cultivating maize, evidenced by the presence of corn pollen on living floors. Schwartz, 1969. Both Toussaint grayware and Toussaint whiteware ceramics increased in eastern Grand Canyon, signaling the expansion of the Kayenta branch from the southeast. During the later portion of the 10th century, masonry surface pubos and semi-subterranean kivas appeared. Population growth was gradual, with the addition of single rooms to existing structures that resulted in linear pubos of two to seven contiguous rooms. Ceramics continued to be dominated by Kayenta wares, with a gradual increase in ceramics from their northern neighbors, the Virgin Branch. While ceramic styles remained relatively stable, after AD 1100, an abrupt change in architecture occurred in Eastern Grand Canyon. Habitation structures became more interspersed with storage rooms and bins, fire pits, and increased use of outdoor activity areas. Schwartz, 1969. Pottery distributions continued to increase in virgin branch styles. Habitation appears to have moved to higher terraces, perhaps to fully exploit regions adjacent to water sources for increased fertile agricultural productivity. According to Schwartz, 1969, it appears that rather than population influxes from different indigenous groups, trade connections with the North were more fully developed in conjunction with localized ceramic traditions. It is believed that by AD 1300, semi-nomadic, non-Publon peoples also occupied the river corridor of Grand Canyon. These Pei and Peyote hunter-gatherers had a stable subsistence economy based on combined agriculture and hunting and gathering, supplemented by trade. Dispersed settlements included wickiup rings, rock shelters, extensive roasting complexes that included ceramics and abundant flake stone tools and debitage. It is also believed that these hunter-gatherers made use of perishables, such as baskets, mats, sandals, and twine. These ancestors of the present day, Hualapai and Havashupai, continue to seasonally utilize both the rim and river corridor until interdiction by the U.S. government. In addition to indigenous populations, Europeans also traverse the Grand Canyon. The historic period includes visitation by Spanish missionaries, mining and tourism entrepreneurs, and more recently, hydroelectric power exploration and production. The prehistory of the river corridor in Grand Canyon closely follows the sequences of regional occupation and abandonment generally agreed upon by Southwestern archeologists. Localized variation in habitation, construction, and ceramic technologies are to be expected. No doubt the inhabitants of Grand Canyon were influenced by the same climatic changes that occurred across the entire Southwest. Archaeologists also assume that population expansion along the river corridor itself was a direct result of population growth along the rims of the Grand Canyon. Because there are only a limited number of entrance and exit points into Grand Canyon, a majority of the sites recorded at permanent water sources and along access routes consist of multiple occupations through time. Subscribe for more updates.